Hey, how's it going again, guys? It's me, David, and um, I have a nice little special shave today. Um, no big event or anything, but I finally made the jump. I finally did it. After watching everybody's videos and everybody's shave of the day photos with this brush, I finally went out to go get it. The Plasson Synthetic Brush. So, how this started was I actually purchased an HJM uh, Synthetic Brush off of Scott, uh, Matt Wayne Scott off of the Wet Sha uh, Shavers Enablers uh, Facebook group tried it out actually enjoyed it um, had nice backbone had a little bit of a springness to it and it just probably the softest thing I've ever put on my face so I was like if this one's not on anybody's top list and I like it that much I really do have to try that Plasson Synthetic so weekend came um, drug my wife uh, to a Lassatane store that we have pretty locally and I purchased one. I have used it a couple times and I'd have to say it doesn't really disappoint. Super soft, made a great lather, worked well for face lathering, I don't think it's too, too, uh, too floppy. With that being said, I still think I prefer uh, Badger brushes a little bit more. The synthetic brushes give a synthetic feel to the shave um, which I'm sure that's probably the purpose it's a synthetic brush but just there's something about the badger uh, the badger hair I just I just enjoy the way it retains the water um, the type of backbone that it has it's it just different it, it's uh, for me is night and day both enjoyable this plus synthetic is very enjoyable to use I will keep it I will use it regularly but I'd have to say my uh, my gold nib, my golden nib uh, silver tip, probably still prefer more. It's a bit more dense, a little bit more backbone, still feels great on the face. Uh, my M North Lavecraft uh, silver tip brush, still love that too. And that Samoa Owners, uh, that Samoa Owners Club, that board brush. Every time I use it, I like that one even more. Um, I soak it very little uh, to help give it a bit more backbone. I soaked it for maybe about 30 seconds the last time I used that brush. And it was great. Loved it. Um, I would recommend that brush to anybody. But today's shave is going to have the Plasson Synthetic Knot. Um, considering I do what Busta did and maybe talk to Scott Pavkovich and see if I can get a, a custom handle for this. Because it's a really nice handle. But those Scott Pavkovich handles are probably a bit nicer. So, might be talking to Scott pretty soon about this. Um, but today, my soap I'm going to be using is the How to Grow a Mustache. Uh, Synergy Safe Soap, uh, Irish Cream. Of course, everybody knows this uh, soap as a soap that was dedicated to uh, the traditional shave evangelist, uh, Chris Bailey. The reason why I decided to use this one today is because I'm actually going to do a couple, th explain to you guys uh, something that actually Chris Bailey rec uh, asked for. He asked me to explain kind of how I care for my straight razors before a shave, during my shave, and after my shave. Everything's pretty basic and uh, pretty simple. I'm a minimalist. If something nice, short, and simple could take care of the job and still give you those top-notch results, I'm going to probably go with that route. And the way I handle my razors is pretty much that same way. Again, this is stuff that works for me. Doesn't guarantee that it works for everybody. Other people are going to have their ways. I'm no expert. I'm no authority on anything, but I'm going to explain to you what I do. So, first I'll go ahead and start loading up my brush. Quick little dip in the hot water for... My plus on synthetic. And I'll explain to you what I do with my razor before I actually shave with it. So knock out a little bit of water. Start loading up the puck. Um, what I like to do with my razor is of course you need to strop it. Me, I use the straight razor designs modular strop. It's pretty much a wood paddle with uh, with the different leathers that have magnets on it. And you can change it out for whatever you need. I still have the real basic one, beginner one. I haven't upgraded yet. I will soon, but I just haven't gotten to it. Um, really want to get that English bridle, but that's a topic for another day. Um, so what I do for uh, my pre-shave ritual when it comes to my razor care is I take out my razor and I have the scrub leather side. I do 15 uh, passes on the scrub leather to warm up my blade. So that's going to be that rough leather that comes with the modular strop. It'll also be the equivalent of like that webbing, that polyester or linen uh, webbing that you'll get with some of your hanging straps. I do 15 uh, forward and back 
uh, passes to one of my blade. Then I will go with 70 for front and back passes on the smooth leather uh, leather side. Some people do less on the on the rough side and do even more. On, I've seen some people do a hundred uh, uh, hundred passes on the smooth leather. I don't feel that as necessary. I've tried anywhere between 50 and 70, and I found 70 that I actually like the result. I can feel the difference. So I stick with uh, 15 and 70. 15 on the rough, 70 on the smooth side. So that's my pre-care for the razor. Real, real basic. Again, keep it simple. So I'll go into a face leather with the Plasant Synthetic. And this soap, the more I use it, the more I enjoy it. I don't know if other people have had this same experience with it, but it seems to be, the, the scent of the soap seems to be changing a bit for me. It actually seems to be getting a bit darker, less sweet, right, right out of the tin. Maybe it's this hot weather we're having over here in California, maybe it's blooming without any water, but when I open the tin now, I have a darker Irish cream scent. It's not as sweet and just, that's without blooming, no water, no anything. Um, I really like it. My wife is liking it more and more. I even brought it up to her and she, she agreed with my, uh, with my opinion on it. So this soap is just great. I love it. One thing I do miss from this soap that I probably have to try the Katie's Bubbles one is the coffee scent. I know they said when they bloom it, you can smell the coffee a bit more. I really don't catch it too, too much, maybe lightly. But I actually love the coffee smell. I love walking into markets or even Starbucks and smelling smelling the coffee scent. So I would like it to be a little bit more dominant, a little bit more of a, of a standout sm smell. But this soap smells great anyways. So it doesn't really need it. I'm happy with the scent, but I'm just being a little anal about it. I love that coffee scent, so I wouldn't mind it. So um, probably going to try and get that uh katie's bubbles one i just actually purchased my first katie's bubble soap um kind of jumping on the bandwagon here i've been seeing everybody use the katie's bubbles lpv and um you know I've, I've been on my list of things that i wanted to get for some time now but i've just been putting it off and just no real excuse just i just haven't done it well finally did it for me is watching uh the stallions uh video recently with that um uh, he only did five swirls on the brush. Got the eight lathers out on his face. That was impressive. So that kind of just put me over the edge. So pretty much the next day after I watched that video, I went to magardrazors.com. Uh, I'm not sure how to say it. Um, and ordered the LPV. So I just can't wait for it to get here. I think it should be here either tomorrow. I think it should be here tomorrow, actually. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's, of course, everybody loves that soap. So I expect nothing different. Magard Razors, or Maggard Razors, forgive me, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce the name completely, but all the talk about their great customer service has proven true. Before I was even able to, 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 to click off the Maggard Razors website, I was already getting an email from, uh, from Casey Maggard, pretty much thanking me for my order and letting me know it will be shipped soon as possible well by the time i replied to that message i was already getting my shipping information so needless to say that's impressive i probably couldn't even have filled out my information for shipping myself that quick so right off the bat that's a great initial impression on the maggot razors uh, website and just company in general i hear nothing but great stuff about them they're nice people on the forums Seen uh, Casey post on Facebook that she likes having a cat in the office, which is cool. More of a dog person, but you know, that's good. Whatever gets her through her day uh, easier. Makes it more enjoyable. Shoot, maybe they even train the cat to print out those labels because it probably goes fast. Okay, so now. My razor care in the middle of my shave. Real important here that you could gather up a good amount of lather on this razor. This is um, a Wade and Butcher Celebrated Hollow Ground. It's a 13-16 uh, width. 
carry a lot of lather on here. But when you finally do decide to, to take off the lather, one thing, do not try to flick the lather off of the razor. Everybody sees those TV shows and try to be all slick and flick it off. Don't do that. You're going to slip up. You're going to bang your razor on, on, on the sink and you're going to end up cracking, cracking it, chipping it, doing something that you don't want to do to this razor. This is 100, 150 years old. I do not want to chip a damn thing on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle it down in this direction. Let the water hit from here. Hot water. Oh, well, warm water, I should say. And run the, run the cream off here. The reason why I angle it down this way is I do not want water to come into the pivot pin. Uh, water could get in there and just, since this is a high carbon steel uh, blade, it'll rust the hell to it. And um, that'll be a quick way just to destroy your blade. I've even seen people's rust so bad that to where the metal will pretty much snap in half. Um, so it really won't be fixable unless you drill a new pivot hole. You really don't want to add extra holes to it. So I let the, so I angle it down this way, let the water run down, take all my cream off. Also, you know, it makes it so that you don't have to always dry your hands in between rinsing it off. The tang part that I hold onto the razor is still completely dry. Not a problem. Since I'm talking a little bit more than usual, getting a little bit dry. And then it's touching my shirt. Just like a time in. I really don't have much of a neck because I'm a bigger dude, so it gets onto the collar real easily. Yeah, so again, it's just really, really important that not to get moisture into that pivot pin. Can't stress that enough. That's going to be the quickest thing to destroy a 100-year-old razor. Even those new production ones is getting rust in that pivot pin. It's, it, it'll destroy it. I'm going to be mindful to try to turn my face this way so you guys can kind of check out what I'm doing over on this side. It makes it a little hard because with the glasses... I'm not real limited to what I can see in my, uh, real limited in my peripheral vision. That's the right way to say it. See with my neck area, try not to talk to it too much. I know this is one of my last videos, I was talking a lot to my, my neck area. There's one thing that I haven't cut myself on my neck yet. I don't want to tempt fate too much. You can only push things so much before it actually bites you. So I'm trying to be a little careful. I'm not trying to do too much. I don't want to wipe off the excess cream. I see it works so far. I actually took a, a little bit of a break from shaving. Just been so busy, tired at the end of the day. So I actually had about three days of growth right there. So it was a little bit more than usual. Usually I, I do it every other day. Usually by the end of the first day I already could do it. But again, just been really tired. Um, we're in the middle of a heat wave over here in California. So we've been pushing 100 degrees the last like week or so. So, if you watch my other videos, you've already seen me complain about how hot it is. Now that we've been in a, we've been like 15, 20 degrees above the average temperature for this time of year, it's been uh, pretty rough. So, <coughs> excuse me, even though I'd love to shave, again, this hot box that is my restroom makes me do a little second guessing. I even was thinking about putting a fan right now. But I don't like to talk too, too loud while I'm doing these videos. And with a fan, I'll probably just have to yell the whole time. So I just decided not to. I think I need a little bit more water. And use this a couple times. Don't need to get used to it. I'm getting pretty good with it. But, you know, still not perfect. I'm not an expert like uh, Mr. Bailey and Buster are. They're the experts. At the synthetics again i enjoy using this brush but again it feels like a synthetic it feels synthetic it does 
you feel that it's not natural and it just feels different for me. You know, so maybe as it'll grow on me more and more again. I do enjoy it, but I just I can't see it taking the place of the, the natural hair. Okay, so I'll go and get across uh, against the ground uh, for my second pass. Remember, be mindful to you know pull the skin as much as I can, and this is where I do my real lightest touch. To really prevent irritation on the neck, I put almost no pressure. This is a very heavy blade. When it comes to these vintage razors, the thickness of the stock was actually pretty inconsistent. So I've seen a few of these in person, and they have all seemed to range in thickness. This one right here, I don't know if you can tell. But it's an absolute monster. Super thick, heavy uh, razor. Again, I got this one from Val Hersonski at the Gentleman's Den. Um, which I'd like to welcome Val to, to the forum. Um, this past week, he's actually begun being more involved. I know he was a member in some of them, I think, before. But he never really got involved. So now he's actually starting to post Shave of the Day uh, photos and... Getting involved in conversation, so that's good. He's a real knowledgeable man. Again, he's pretty much my uh, my straight razor mentor. You know, he's been uh, with me since the beginning. Got the majority of my razors from him, so he's definitely a man that I trust his opinion on things. Still talk to him quite a bit on Instagram, and you know, it's just good. It's good to have him around the forums. He's a knowledgeable guy, real good guy too. So back to this razor though. It was restored by Val. It is a celebrated hollow ground. Let's see, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? The etching is real light after the restoration. You know, we had to go over it a bit. So it did lighten up, but you can still see it. The scales are a uh, black mother of pearl kiranite. Get that at USA Knife Makers. And pictures and the camera don't do it justice the depth of color on this kind of like a charcoal gray the depth of color is just amazing you can't really tell on the pictures but when you see it in the light here you see the little bit of swirls of colors you see kind of like the metallic nature of it and it's it's beautiful i look forward to getting another razor with another mother of pro color This is just a great material. Really durable. Feels heavy duty. Solid. For this he for this heavy a blade. They really needed something nice, thick, and heavy to support it. And the Kiranite does the job. It just really does. Brush a little bit. Need a little bit of a mess here. Yeah, so the Kiranite. Gave a great balance. And you know, which, which, as heavy as it is, it really needed it. And then without throwing his little flare into it, he added the little toxic green spacer. Really nice. Hopefully the camera's in focus so you can see it. Again, you really can't appreciate it. Again, I'm using my Galaxy Note uh, camera. So you're gonna lose a lot in uh, in the quality because I'm not using some fancy equipment for it. But just trust me, if you buy the material, if you're somebody that restores razors, or you just get it from another uh, another person that does rescales and stuff, Kiranite's it's a solid solid material. Definitely happy with it. Again, I look forward to getting more. So it's gonna be my third pass. I'm gonna go with the across the grain pass now. And so, here we go. And my stepson's over there being loud. I'm sure you'll be able to hear him. 
We don't have much of indoor voices in this house. It's the way it is. I'm going to let him do a full third pass on the neck. Just kind of like a touch up. Just real quick. Keep the angle. Seconds before I started recording this video, I just watched uh, the Shave the Man uh, 9 on 9 videos. Great list. Khan, I've been having conversations with him on the Shave the Man Facebook forum. Watching his videos, he's a really nice guy. Did a great list. A lot of the guys that I had daily conversations with on the forums. Uh, Busta was on that, Chris Bailey, Anthony Esposito. Um, Nick Shaves, all the heavy hitters in, in the wet shaving community right now, I would say. I would say that he's missing Michael Friedberg on that list, but Michael hasn't been making a lot of videos lately. So, I guess I kind of could hinder his spot on my list, because I love Michael Friedberg's videos, but he just hasn't been coming out with much lately. My shave, that razor, that, that razor just cuts through anything. It's a big beefy man. So, okay. Also, this week since I went to that Lasatine store, Lasatine is a much nicer neighborhood than I than I live in. So I was able to actually when I was over there, right across the street was a Whole Foods. What they have at Whole Foods is Bayer's witch hazel. Been using this for the whole the week. I love it. I've seen some of the cheaper witch hazel products over at like um, Skater Brothers and all the regular markets. It's in a, in a like a rubbing alcohol bottle. It smells horrible. The, the, the smell of it is just so intense and strong that I would I didn't even bother trying to use it. But since I was in the neighborhood, I picked up a bottle of the Thayer's witch hazel. This is the, the original with aloe vera. The scent is real mild, not offensive whatsoever like the ones that the... the at the cheaper versions. And these are skin feeling really nice. That aloe vera in the witch hazel is great. Let it set for a little bit. And I like to dry it off. Then I'm gonna use the Parasso Green aftershave. Used it in another one of the videos, and again, it's just one of my favorites. It kinda goes with anything. You know, I don't really have no aftershaves that are sweet like this one. And again, this one just kind of complements anything. So, okay, Parasso Green. Okay, so now for the last part of my my general razor care. Um, uh, for, first and foremost, you're going to want to dry your razor. Um, what I use is a basic uh, toilet paper square. Um, I'm going to be off camera real quick. Let me grab a sheet. Okay, so for this one, using a paper towel. I used I I like using the color paper better, it's softer, but this one could work for the time being. So what I'll do is again with the spine down, kind of make a little uh, taco out of the toilet paper or the napkin, and just kind of pull across here. Get all the gunk off. Uh, if you don't clean it good enough, you end up with like a soap permanent soap stain on the razor. Really don't like that. So you want to make sure you get that good. Again, you want to be firm with the wipe, but not too firm to where you're going to cut through the napkin. You got to really be careful with that because going the whole length of the blade and, and catching yourself on that, you're going to cause some real damage. And um, you don't need no real polish or nothing like that. The, the paper will polish up your razor nice for display purposes. Um, 
after you get that blade clean, you want to clean inside of the scales. So I fold up my napkin, pull it through here, hold it kind of tight, and run it through. Make sure I get as close to the pivot pin as I possibly can, then kind of pull it so I can get the other scale. Okay. And something that I like to do just for just to be safe with it, um, the way I display my razors are on hooks. I made a little display cabinet and it has hooks on it too, or it displays like this. What I like to do just to make sure that all moisture dries inside the scales and doesn't get onto the razor to cause any rust, I'll actually hang it onto the hook like this, a little bit lower because it's a big blade, like that, let the scales dry, uh, dry overnight, and then in the morning I'll just close it back up and nothing to worry about. Again, really important, water is going to be the worst enemy of your razor, not only during the shave because you might slip and cut yourself, but water is going to be one of the main causes that you deteriorate your razor. Um, at this point, usually there's even a lot of people that like to strop their razors after uh, after a shave. They say stropping it while the blade is still warm will help, you know, center your blade right, get everything nice and crisp and clean. I think it's a little bit of overkill because when you use the rough uh, scrub leather or you use the the nylon webbing um, before your shave, that's warming up the blade anyways. So that's supposed to warm up your blade. And um, once you do it on the on the on the smooth leather side, it's supposed to straighten it all off uh, from there. I don't want to overdo it. The edge is already so keen on these razors that the more you mess with it, when you really don't need to, I feel that you're just asking for trouble, possibly dulling it. Um, at this point, my technique's pretty good, but I still, again, you don't want to tempt fate. Um, so I go ahead and do that. If you have razors that are in your normal rotation, you really don't need to oil them at this point. If you have a razor that you're going to have displayed for a while, it's not going to get used, it's going to get stuck in the drawer, you're going to want to use some blade oil. Uh, Straightrazor, uh, Straightrazordesigns.com has a, a razor oil and a blade applicator to make sure you put a nice thin. Um, don't put olive oil. Um, olive oil and stuff could, uh, I guess, kind of rot, deteriorate since it's meant for food. So you don't want to put that. But yeah, if you do have a blade that's sitting around for a while, make sure you oil it. If you have blades in regular rotation, I have five razors. I rotate each one after another and another. So they're all getting steady use. Really not an issue with the blade, with the blade oil. So I don't even have to worry about it. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, concerns, any opinions on what I'm doing. Again, I don't claim to be an expert. This is just stuff that works for me. Um, any other suggestions for shows afterwards, um, for videos after this point, please feel free. I, I, I love the suggestion. It kind of drives the whole show. I enjoy doing these videos. So if the more people I can help with them, um, the better. Um, again, like, share, subscribe, and um, have a good night, everybody.